beautiful structure here. You can visualize it, just a big, big rock point sticking out and a big flat up in here. We're coming up on it now and as quick as we're coming up on it now, it drops off out to an abyss on the other side too. Super cool spot. Here. There we go. <laughs> Look at that girl. Nice big bass, man. On the KVD jerk bait. Beautiful, man. Look at that. The pre-spawn is on. It's actually, it's actually getting pretty late. Perfect, pretty as a picture. We're in our third week of pre-spawn in northern Minnesota right now. We had exceptionally warm weather to kick off early spring. And then the last two weeks, it's gotten really cold. But our water temps are hovering around 52 to 54 degrees. Perfect time for these guys to move shallow, get ready to start spawning up. And before they start spawning, big smallmouth like this go on a major feeding binge. You know, jerk bait is pretty tough to beat, especially in really clear bodies of water like we're on today. Man, they just go nuts for that, that really erratic action. Right there. Here, little guy. Fun though, it's a fun visual game. I'm gonna tail and down here. But we started out on this finger at the end we fished almost all the way to the point where this finger now spreads out on this, this rock flat. They want a big mid-depth shallow rocky flat to go make their beds. They want boulders, they want wood, they want warmer water. And I just caught that last one pretty much as we're coming up on this flat. I see that fish hanging right there. And so I'm expecting there to be a bunch of fish up there. So those guys are getting ready to make some babies. Water temp is 53 degrees. We're still well within a good jerkbait water temperature range, anywhere from 40 to up in the north country, 58 degrees. The jerkbait is really good, and those fish are likely gonna be in a pre-spawn pattern. I can see a bed. I mean, I'm one, two, I see three beds right now. So we're gonna make a move. The place I started out today, I thought it was gonna be lights out. I was out here with a buddy two days ago, and we pulled up in the morning, and we just started whacking them. But we've had two days of consistently warm weather, and they're actually starting to bed up right now. You know, this is a big lake, 4,000 acres. It's deep, it's cold, it's clear. There's several different main lake basins, so the water temperature can actually vary quite a bit. So we're gonna make a move to another portion of it, and there's a good chance there's fish in, you know, multiple stages of the spawn across this lake right now so what we're hoping to find is some easy to catch pre-spawn fish that will respond well to the jerkbait because I'd rather go after them than I would bedding fish. There we go. To me the real compelling reason for a jerkbait in the spring of the year during the pre-spawn nearly all of the food in the lake spawns up on in the shallows in the spring. So the shallows is literally littered with minnows of all shapes, sizes, and colors. So the bass aren't necessarily keyed in on a crayfish bite. The crayfish aren't all that active in this cold water yet. We're keen in on smallmouth bass that are keyed in on chasing minnows. You know, when I'm making comparisons to jerkbait fishing for, you know, largemouth bass throughout the country versus clearwater smallmouth bass, a couple differences are, number one, lure color. Smallmouth bass are just an inherently curious fish. Gaudy or bright colors, even in the clearest bodies of water, seems to get bit more than natural colors. So I certainly carry a good assortment of baits and bright colors. I'm talking clown, blaze orange, pink. They're just really intrigued with it. It's like cotton candy for a human. They just, they want to hit it. The other thing is fish with a, a really erratic action. So the ice leaves our lakes sometime in April. Right when it leaves, you know, you need to fish a little slower, but when you, when you push 48 on up into 50, fishing that lure with a real wide jerk or a slash action seems to get their attention better, calls them from further away and triggers more bites. I do a lot of slack line jerking, but I can literally throw one to two foot lateral movement into the bait between jerks and then just kill it, let the bait sit there. And oftentimes, or most of the time, when that bait is sitting there, that's when they come up and bite it. You know, in clear water, we can actually see what works. You know, and that kind of leads to a third thing in clear lakes, and that's replacing the back treble hook on a lot of our jerk baits with a jeweled treble hook. So I just simply took off the stock treble hook on this lure here, and I put on this little jeweled treble. This is a VMC. But if you think about it, smallmouth are really accustomed to feeding on these big fly hatches we have on these lakes. So having some hair down there really does look like a fly off the back of a minnow. And I'd say at least seven, eight times out of 10 when that smallmouth comes up and bites the bait when you're killing it, they literally just nip that treble hook. You're gonna catch more fish if you replace the back treble hook on your jerk baits with a jeweled treble hook. There he is. Decent fish. Flat calm conditions. 
That smallmouth just came up and barely touched that the back of the hook, that treble. Just beautiful down there in that clear water though. You know, and that's a reason why a good leader is important, a leader material of either monofilament or fluorocarbon, just for a little shock absorption. Just like a crankbait, you don't want to rip those tiny little hooks out of their mouth. You just want to get that bait tight on them and those little light wire hooks will penetrate on their own under tension. There we go, not a, not a tank, not as big as they were, but still a nice fish. He hit it. Got him. <laughs> That's a good time. I just got a wolf pack of them on my bait off the break. They're small ones. They're little males, but still, it's that's a decent fish. A lot of fun though, man, when you can sight fish them like this with a jerk bait. Certainly a compelling reason too, aside from the fish liking it, but a gaudy color jerk bait. It's as much about something that you can see above the water too. You don't lose that bait. You can move that bait. You can watch how the fish are responding, you know, and connect with some pretty nice fish. Look at coughing a bunch of minnows down there. And like we talked about earlier, this isn't a crayfish pattern. That, that fish just coughed three, four shiner minnows. Spring of the year like this, just made my, my job a little bit easier. Spring of the year like this, it's all about a minnow profile. There we go. That wasn't the fish I was talking about. I didn't, look at, there's a couple nice ones down here. One, two, three, four. Just chilling. Oh, here comes a couple more buddies to say hi. They show up, look at it, coffin minnows. About the size of my, about the size of my jerk bait. You know, that's important too. If you see them coffin bait, what, what size is the bait? Size your jerk bait to match. The only thing that's a little odd about the system is that ridiculous color. That's a clown color, but you know, Mark Menendez said it best in a video we put together earlier this year. He says, fish do like something that's non-natural. You look at this bait, it's very natural in terms of the profile. The action in the water is probably a little unnatural. It looks like a dying fish. It's really erratic. It's not something the fish usually see. And certainly the color is non-natural. That's not a natural pattern by any means, but you know, when you're chasing smallmouth bass, these suckers are really curious. They like bright colors and clear water. Here we go. There we go. How do you like that for competition, huh? <laughs> Man, that's fun. I got this one hooked a little goofy. There's some big, great big ones off this break. I'm gonna back us off the structure a little bit. Pretty, huh? Not bad. A pretty small mouth on a jerk bait. So with spinning equipment, my preferred line choice is 10 pound braid. This is suffix 832. It's a bright line. It's something I can see oftentimes. I'll see that line go like that. That means I just got T-boned by a bass. So the line serves as a good strike indicator. I got a little bit of leader material, but the one thing that that braid does that can be really important is a small twitch of that rod tip like that moves that bait. It has no stretch and I'm sending that motion of that soft rod tip down to that mono or fluorocarbon leader where I get a little bit of stretch and it almost ricochets or flings that bait in the water. And that's what really helps me get that erratic side to side action on braid. I always like to have at least one combo rigged on spinning so I can fish those little bit smaller jerk baits, make long casts. If it's a little bit more of a finesse bite, like these fish have been biting incredibly light, I've been able to sight, see, sight fish them, but I can just reel down quickly with the spinning reel, picks up line quickly, tighten down on the whole system and I got them pinned. You know, and then I'll pick up the bait casting rod for, the, for a bigger jerk bait like that. You know, and that'll be spooled with 10 to 14 pound monofilament or fluorocarbon, depending on the conditions. Their backs are kind of green olive. Well, you look at that hole up there, there's actually a big smallmouth sitting right on the edge of it, which I'm gonna try to fire well beyond it. And I don't wanna spook them, so I'm gonna use a shallow water anchor. Got that X-wrap in the bottom right now, and that, bait, that fish is really interested in it. And I got that bill digging down in the bottom. He's turning on it. I mean, I almost got him to bite. He's really interested in it. I just need him to bite that. There, I got him. I finally got him. That was a lot of fun, man. Talk about a cast of cat and mouse game. Woo! That was a cool deal with a little bit deeper diving bait with a little lip on it. Casted that bait and I drove it into the bottom and it's kind of sandy up there. And the only thing sticking out was that tail. So I don't know what it did for that fish, but finally said, I can't take it, I'm biting that. 
Huh? How about that? That's a lot of fun, man, when you can watch that fish the entire time you're working the bait and then adjust your presentation to the fish and get them to bite.